are back. Joining us for our first conversation is the ambassador to Ukraine, uh, Andrei Melnik. He's joining us via Zoom all the way in Kiev in Ukraine. Good morning, ambassador. Uh, good morning, uh, April. Good morning, uh, Isani. Best morning. greetings from Kiev to, to Belize. Same here. Ambassador, I'd like to, to begin with uh, the historic moment as you were as we were discussing uh, earlier uh, with the US American President uh, Joseph Biden. He is making his first trip into Kiev this year. Is he already there? Um, here's, uh, uh, so thank you so much for, for this question. Uh, indeed, uh, it has been a, a historic uh, visit of uh, U.S. president uh, to Ukraine. Uh, the last president um, uh, who was here, uh, it was, um, uh, it was uh, the pre President uh, uh, Bush, uh, and uh, it was uh, back in 2008. So it's almost 15 years have passed uh, since uh, ahead of the state uh, of the United States um, had uh, visited Ukraine, uh, and uh, uh, it is indeed a strong sign of uh, solidarity uh, to the Ukrainian people. Uh, just as uh, as we uh, approach the uh, uh, first sad anniversary uh, of this uh, large-scale Russian uh, aggression, and uh, uh, and it has been uh, a tremendous. Um, uh, sign of, uh, of support uh, to the Ukrainians, to, to, to our President Volodymyr Zelensky, the whole government, uh, but, but for the whole nation uh, to, uh, to accept and to welcome uh, the US President uh, Joe Biden here uh, in Kyiv. Uh, uh, this visit uh, will go down uh, in history without uh, any doubt, uh, and not just uh, because uh, he has assured again that uh, the United States would uh, uh, stand by uh, Ukraine and uh, would help us uh, to deter this uh, aggression and to, to uh, liberate all the occupied uh, territories uh, of uh, our country. Uh, since the beginning of this war, uh, we uh, there are about 18% uh, of, um, uh, of the whole territory which uh, is under uh, the occupation of, of Russia. And uh, our goal is, of course, to, uh, to, to free, to free our people, not just those territories. and. Uh, the United States uh, uh, and, and Europe uh, stand firmly on, on our side, uh, and uh, this visit uh, has shown that we can count on our allies, we can count on our partners, but not just the United States. Uh, we, uh, we also uh, are grateful uh, to the help that we uh, have been receiving uh, from other countries all over the globe, uh, irrespective of the ge geographic distance. And uh, I would like also to thank uh, uh, Belize and thank uh, uh, your Prime Minister uh, Briseño for his uh, contribution uh, last year. The, we had the uh, first uh, ever uh, phone call between President Zelensky and your Prime Minister, and um, that was something uh, which we cherish, that uh, uh, irrespective of, uh, of the distance, uh, we feel uh, the empathy and the sympathy of the Belizean uh, people with us, and that is something uh, which uh, which would uh, remain in history uh, for uh, for centuries. So you have uh, huge support from other world leaders mm -hmm. in terms of standing in solidarity with Ukraine. But describe for us what it has been like over the past 12 months. I know we've mentioned that we're on the first or the one year anniversary of this most uh, unfortunate situation. What has it been like in terms of uh, persons on the ground who have had to flood their homes in terms of perhaps uh, the political directorate being able to deal with this situation from that perspective as well? Well, you are, you are right. Unfortunately, uh, Ukrainians have to uh, pay uh, a very huge price uh, for for this war, uh, uh, this uh, war of aggression or war of annihilation, uh, it is not just a war that we used to, to know from, from history books. Uh, it is a, a war with genocidal uh, features and uh, it is a war of uh, extinction. Uh, Putin uh, desires uh, to destroy not just uh, the Ukrainian state, but just to also destroy our identity, uh, our culture. And um, uh, th therefore, it is waged uh, not uh, primarily against our army, 
uh, but uh, uh, but foremost against uh, uh, civilians, against women and, and children. Mm -hmm. And uh, the price is huge, uh, about uh, 13 million uh, Ukrainians, uh, 13 million Ukrainians, I would like to repeat it, uh, had to flee uh, their homes, uh, uh, foremost from the eastern part of Ukraine, where the most uh, battles uh, uh, are uh, being waged as we speak uh, with you now, and uh, uh, about uh, uh, 8 million Ukrainians uh, uh, were, um, uh, were, were basically uh, pushed to, to leave the country and uh, they have been provided shelter uh, from the Russian uh, aggression uh, in the uh, EU, in the European countries, and uh, 5 million, uh, they are so-called um, internally displayed persons, IDPs, uh, um, people who are, uh, have to live now in Kyiv, in the capital, it's in the central um, in the middle of, of the country uh, or in or, or in the western part uh, of Ukraine, in Lviv, that's uh, the city where I come from, a UNESCO uh, cultural her heritage. Uh, so it's uh, really uh, devastating because uh, you can imagine how many destinies were destroyed because um, kids had to leave their schools to, uh, to, to lose their friends and uh, uh, most of them, most of those who had to flee uh, and uh, let me repeat it again, 13, why one, three, 13 million Ukrainians, um, they uh, are mainly uh, women and children because uh, men uh, had to stay uh, uh, to, to, to defend, to defend um, the, the, the country and we are experiencing uh, basically uh, battles like uh, 100 years ago, like in, in the First World War, trenches uh, during the winter, uh, and uh, it is uh, just unimaginable, uh, I mean, that uh, scale uh, of, of destruction uh, and uh, the magnitude uh, of uh, devastation that our economy has uh, suffered. Uh, uh, we lost, uh, during the last year, about one-third uh, of our uh, GDP, one-third uh, just within uh, one year, which has uh, tremendous uh, consequences uh, also for, for the social uh, system, uh, for, for salaries, for... Uh, for uh, employment uh, in our country. And, um, um, but what is the, the most uh, scary is uh, that Russia uh, is waging uh, this war, uh, breaching all the international um, legal norms, uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, committing uh, uh, war crimes uh, at the scale that, uh, is, uh, that, that is just not cannot be imaginable. Uh, for, uh, for, for people living uh, in, in Belize, uh, living in the Caribbean uh, and, and Central American uh, countries, uh, that uh, this uh, catastrophe, this tragedy uh, can take place uh, just some thousand, uh, few thousand kilometers uh, away from, from, from your region. And uh, we, what we see uh, is uh, deliberate uh, attacks on civilians, on, on, on the, uh, kindergartens, schools, uh, museums, uh, uh, hospitals, uh, energy infrastructure. So that's uh, that's basically uh, we can say that it is a war, uh, uh, it is aggression, a war of aggression. And we hope uh, that uh, when it is over, uh, that uh, all those uh, who are responsible for uh, for uh, this suffering uh, of uh, millions of Ukrainians will be brought uh, to justice, not just uh, uh, those who perpetrate uh, th those crimes, like like torturing, uh, mm -hmm. like uh, uh, like rapes uh, of, of women and, and children, like uh, forceful uh, uh, deportation uh, of uh, uh, thousands of Ukrainian children in the occupied territories to Russia, and then re-education. So it's really terrible things that, that we are experiencing, and therefore we hope um, that our partners, uh, our partners, not just the, 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 the big allies like the United States, but also our our uh, close partners um, in the Americas, in, in, in the Caribbean, like Belize, uh, could also support us uh, foremost uh, in the General Assembly of the United Nations. That's the main forum where we hope uh, to, um, to initiate a peace process. Uh, and uh, um, this week there will be a new resolution uh, voted uh, uh, to prepare the ground for a lasting and stable peace uh, in Ukraine and, and uh, to assure that, uh, uh, that uh, the questions of uh, justice will be uh, dealt uh, uh, with, uh, that the question of uh, 
um, of uh, uh, rebuilding uh, the country, of uh, of um, uh, war reparations, because uh, it's like it's hundreds of billions of, of U.S. dollar uh, that uh, we have lost because of, of this uh, huge devastation, and all those questions uh, have uh, have to be dealt uh, uh, by uh, our friends and allies in the UN, and we hope that Belize would also continue to support us, to support Ukrainians in this terrible war of annihilation. So, along with the visit of President Biden earlier, uh, there is a pledge from the U.S. government to provide an additional half billion dollars in funding. Uh, speak to us about this. Is it earmarked for a particular aspect of the Ukrainian economy? Uh, yes, you are right. I mean, this visit of uh, U.S. President uh, Joe Biden uh, has not just a uh, uh, deep symbolic uh, meaning, uh, but uh, uh, it is also um, a sign uh, of, of support in practical terms. Uh, you mentioned uh, this uh, half a billion uh, U.S. dollar uh, military assistance. It's a new package that uh, uh, the head of the White House um, declared uh, today uh, while being uh, in Kiev, and uh, it is crucial for us uh, um, because um, our cities uh, are being attacked uh, um, day and night, uh, without, uh, without uh, interruptions, without any pause. Even today, when, when the U.S. president was in Kiev, um, the air raid sirens uh, um, could, could be heard uh, in, in the background of, uh, of his um, visit. And therefore, all we need is uh, to um, defend the sky, uh, to um, strengthen our air defense capabilities, and uh, uh, the decision to provide Ukraine with Patriot uh, anti-rocket systems has been also um, a huge um, a leap forward uh, to uh, to ensure that civilians are better protected also in Kyiv, because even Kyiv uh, was a, a target of uh, uh, attacks by, by Russian military. Uh, those uh, hyper, uh, hyper sound uh, rockets uh, like uh, uh, Kaliber or Kinjal, uh, all those terrible names, uh, each Ukrainian uh, knows they uh, and knows them by heart uh, uh, until now. So that is crucial. We would also need, of course, uh, a new step would be uh, to provide uh, Ukraine with um, uh, fighter jets to ensure the security of the skies and to prevent all those uh, terrible attacks uh, that took take place either uh, with the Russian, uh, with Russian air uh, force uh, or with the, from the Russian Navy in the Black Sea. Um, so therefore, we, we need uh, much more um, support and assistance uh, to ensure that our army can duly uh, can duly protect uh, um, our citizens uh, from from those indiscriminate uh, and, and terrible uh, attacks that we have been experiencing and you're right uh, also the economy i mentioned that uh, ukraine has lost uh, um, over 30 percent of our uh, of our gdp uh, uh, in last year alone uh, so we are uh, we count uh, on on the financial support as well from our partners and uh, and we are grateful that the United States uh, has uh, allocated uh, over 12 billion uh, U.S. dollars just uh, just to help us fill this huge gap in, in our budget. Our European uh, allies from the European Union have uh, also been helping us in that sense. So uh, Ukraine uh, is still uh, the biggest purely European country uh, in terms of of, uh, uh, of territory, but uh, we cannot sustain. We cannot. Uh, uh, manage uh, and we cannot uh, defend our territory without uh, this huge support of our uh, key allies uh, uh, from the United States, from from Europe, and hopefully, and hopefully, and that is my big wish and, and my appeal also to the people in the Caribbean, in, in Belize, that we, we would also um, feel that uh, uh, not just in the UN, not just uh, at this uh, highest body, the General Assembly, uh, we have been sensing and and and. Uh, uh, that support uh, from your country, but also uh, from from other societies, um, uh, that we we can uh, see that uh, this cause of Ukraine is it's not just our uh, our uh, uh, challenge, not just our uh, tragedy. It is a tragedy which uh, uh, concerns each and every people, uh, each and every person of goodwill uh, throughout the, the whole globe. And that is something that is a message I would like to to pass to your audience, to, to all the people in, in Belize. Um, to think how um, you can uh, support uh, Ukraine, um, those who had to flee uh, uh, with uh, humanitarian uh, aid or with uh, any other 
uh, assistance that uh, that uh, your people, uh, your government uh, could provide us. Ambassador, explain for us or describe for us the geopolitical fallout or the consequences of this war in terms of uh, Ukraine building its allies with other European nations and of course perhaps the sanctions that have been brought against Russia because of this invasion. Uh, yeah, I mean, this, this war, uh, it is, uh, uh, and you, 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 you just have to imagine, uh, it is the, uh, the biggest war on the European soil since the Second World War, since the 1945. Uh, in terms of, of dimensions, in terms of, uh, of uh, victims, uh, in terms of destruction, and uh, in terms of uh, cynicism uh, of, of that war. Uh, because as I mentioned, and I, I, I must repeat it, uh, this war is being waged against ordinary people. So that's why uh, we are grateful that uh, our allies uh, in the United States, uh, in Canada, uh, but uh, foremost uh, uh, in the European uh, Union, that they have introduced a number of, of sanctions um, uh, to uh, help um, uh, to weaken the um, Russian economy because uh, um, they still uh, are uh, producing uh, heavy weaponry uh, like tanks and, 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 and rockets and everything which they need uh, uh, to, uh, to conquer us, to, to destroy our um, uh, country. Uh, and uh, th th therefore, it was, uh, uh, it was a very important strategic decision uh, to, um, to introduce those sanctions. Uh, they are working. Uh, uh, we would like them to, to be uh, more efficient. Uh, we would like uh, to, to expand those sanctions because, uh, uh, for instance, uh, I mean, you, you, you can still uh, trade with Russia. Uh, it is not forbidden. Only in, in certain uh, spheres uh, it is uh, uh, not allowed now to, to, to invest in Russia or, or buy Russian products. But basically, uh, we still uh, have to uh, admit that, that there is a number, a number of loopholes that uh, uh, gaps uh, in, in, that, in that regime that has to be, uh, has to be uh, closed. Uh, and uh, that is also our appeal to the international community um, to tighten uh, those sanctions, because we see, uh, even though the Russian economy uh, suffered a lot, uh, uh, also in terms of revenues from oil and gas uh, exports, but, uh, but uh, it is still there, it is still working, it is still producing um, those um, uh, weapons which, with which they kill uh, Ukrainian, uh, Ukrainians, uh, women and, and, and children, uh, as, as, as we speak uh, with you now. Therefore, uh, it is important that uh, this sanctioned regime uh, uh, could be expanded, that other countries uh, would also consider, introduce their own uh, decisions how, uh, how to uh, help us uh, weaken the economy. And the problem is, you mentioned this uh, geopolitical uh, uh, dimension of, 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 of this war. The, the most problem is, uh, and uh, we can understand, of course, some, um, uh, some hesitation uh, on, on the part of our Latin American friends and, and countries in, in, in Central America, that they say, well, look, um, there, there are no sanctions uh, introduced by the Security Council of the UN, and that is the highest, uh, the highest organ, the highest uh, institution that uh, is... Uh, uh, obliged uh, to to be active uh, when a war at this scale uh, begins, but the problem is, as you know, Russia has a permanent uh, seat in the Security Council, and uh, Russia still has a veto uh, right. And uh, of course, uh, uh, that is the main obstacle because this, uh, the most important uh, institution, is basically blocked. And therefore, the General Assembly is uh, uh, for us the the, the second biggest uh, revenue to address all the issues that, that we face uh, um, uh, in the wake of, of that uh, aggression. Uh, and therefore, it is so difficult uh, for other countries to persuade them uh, in Latin America uh, that they would join uh, this sanctioned regime uh, without a Security Council resolution, which would, uh, uh, which would empower those countries to, to, uh, to deal in that way. So it's a number of, of, of issues which are still at stake. Uh, this war has shown that uh, the UN uh, might also be uh, reformed uh, as when this war is over, uh, because we see uh, that uh, uh, the main instruments that the, the mankind uh, has uh, in its hands, like a Security Council that would uh, introduce uh, tough sanctions, they have not been working uh, when one 
part of, of, of that war uh, the, that, that started this war uh, has this immunity and has the permanent is a permanent member itself uh, of the Security Council. Therefore, uh, a number of issues where we have to be creative, and we hope that also Belize and, and that your government, uh, Prime Minister Briseño, uh, would uh, come up with, with some ideas how to help us reform and modernize the whole system of um, uh, preventive diplomacy, the whole system of international security, because we have seen all, all, those, uh, um, uh, all those deficiencies uh, of, of the system. Ambassador, I understand that at this very moment, you all are trying your best to build your economy back, even with the war raging uh, ahead of you. Talk to us about uh, the civilian life at the moment. I know that you would still have schools going on, your clinics are still open, your public spaces are still open. Yes, you had 13 million people migrating out of Ukraine, but you still have the majority that still remain uh, currently living in Ukraine. Talk to us about the, the buildup of civilian life. How are the persons that living in Ukraine managing at this time? Well, it is uh, difficult to describe uh, and, uh, because it is a very peculiar situation. I mean, on the one hand, uh, we all, uh, and even ourselves, my team here, uh, as we speak to you uh, from, from, our, uh, from this building uh, in the middle of, um, of Kiev, in the downtown uh, of historical uh, center of, of Kiev, our capital uh, of Ukraine, uh, we all know and, and we feel uh, that uh, each of us uh, can become uh, a target uh, of, uh, uh, of those indiscriminate uh, shellings uh, by Russia. And uh, that is something which, uh, uh, of course, causes uh, a psychological trauma, uh, yes. not just for kids, uh, for everyone. Um, uh, it's on the one side. On the other side, people um, try uh, just to um, uh, not to think about this. And, and uh, you are right. Uh, if you would uh, be now in Kiev, and, and I would like to, to invite you, yourself, uh, dear April, dear Hussein, uh, for, to, to Kiev uh, to visit uh, uh, our country, uh, even as this war uh, still goes on, uh, you would, uh, you would uh, notice that uh, it is a very strange situation. On the one hand, there is this overwhelming uh, feeling of the presence of the war. When you wake up, you know that uh, this war is still there, uh, that might be a new uh, air raid alarm and, and sirens will, will be uh, screaming. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, uh, you need to work. You need to to uh, ensure that your economy is still running, that, uh, yeah. that you, you produce enough goods to, to, to ensure that the army uh, is, uh, uh, has uh, all, all, everything they, uh, they, our soldiers need. Uh, and this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, front line is uh, 1,500 kilometers long, if you can imagine, mm -hmm. uh, 1,500 kilometers long. And people uh, and who live along uh, that uh, huge line in, in, in the eastern and southern part of Ukraine, they suffer most because uh, uh, there uh, Russia uh, uses artillery and uh, uh, multiple uh, rockets uh, with a small distance like uh, 30, 40 kilometers that they can, uh, can, can reach uh, and they are shelling uh, without pause, without any, uh, any, uh, any uh, interruption. All those uh, small cities in, in Zaporizhia, in Kherson, in Donetsk, in Kharkiv as well. Uh, so uh, the life there is, is, is like a hell uh, on earth. But in Kiev, uh, it's it's a it's a, another feeling. I mean, uh, since uh, I mean, since nine months, uh, you can go to to, to a theater, uh, cafes and, and restaurants uh, are open. Um, governmental uh, institutions uh, working like, like usually like one year ago. So it's just like a, like a strange um, uh, feeling uh, having this war in mind all the time, but at the same time trying to live your life uh, and, and, and bring your kids uh, to, to school uh, and, and, and make some make, make some um, uh, something and, and buy some food. So it's 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 very strange situation, but that's uh, this is, that's the life. That, um, that we have not chosen, but we must uh, sustain, we must prevail. And that is something that, uh, uh, that uh, is uh, in the mind of each and every uh, Ukrainian. Uh, we, have, we have to ensure that, uh, that our economy uh, is, is still working, that, uh, that uh, uh, irrespective uh, of the fact that we have lost so many people, eight, over eight millions, the Ukrainians who had to flee uh, to, to Europe, uh, some of them are returning uh, slowly back 
because they see uh, in Kyiv it is more or less safe. Uh, in the western part of Ukraine, uh, it's also uh, quite safe, but uh, but at the same time, uh, we, we, we still have to uh, to bear in mind that this war is uh, is uh, is omnipresent, is everywhere. Uh, as we speak, uh, uh, you you everyone needs uh, probably some psychological help because since uh, almost a year, uh, you wake up and you go to bed with one and the same feeling that this war is there. Russia um, does not uh, give up um, uh, its uh, plans uh, to conquer um, the whole of Ukraine, to, to destroy us, and that is something uh, which uh, which we have uh, in mind. And therefore, we we hope that uh, that people in Belize uh, would also understand us. Uh, it is difficult, I know, uh, it is uh, hardly imaginable, but still, uh, we hope uh, to to have that kind of solidarity uh, from from Belize from all the other countries in the Caribbean region, uh, in the Central America, in Latin America, all over the globe, basically, that uh, it cannot be that Ukraine uh, c can stay alone. We need your support. Okay, Ambassador, it's been almost one year to date since the invasion began. Uh, can you share with us perhaps a calculation of the death toll thus far? Uh, sorry, may you uh, repeat uh, your question? I didn't hear it well. Okay, so it's been almost a year to date uh, since the invasion began. Can you share with us perhaps a calculation of the death toll thus far? How many people have lost their lives uh, since this war began a year ago? Well, it is, uh, it is difficult uh, to, to, to name a, any numbers, uh, and I explain you why. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, if, you, um, if you would remember uh, the city of Mariupol, uh, it's uh, one of the biggest cities in, in Ukraine. Uh, over half a million people uh, lived there before the war. Yeah. It's uh, in, the, um, in the eastern, um, it, it is in the south uh, east of, of Ukraine, a huge city uh, which, uh, for the time being, uh, is, is almost totally destroyed. And uh, we fear that the dozens of thousands uh, of, of Ukrainians um, had to die uh, alone uh, in, that, in, in that city. Uh, and of course, uh, besides that, um, uh, you, you have uh, tremendous uh, military uh, losses, uh, um, which uh, I can, cannot disclose uh, mm -hmm. to you at the moment, but, uh, but you can imagine that uh, that we are speaking about uh, about many many thousands uh, of, of Ukrainian soldiers that uh, lost uh, their life, that they were wounded, uh, they, 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 that they were traumatized. Uh, so it's 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 unbelievable. We cannot uh, we can, we have not uh, have yet access to um, uh, 18 percent of our um, of our territory, uh, which is still under uh, occupation, and therefore it will only be possible. Uh, when the war is over, when the hostilities are ceased, uh, when when we uh, receive access to, to those uh, uh, liberated territories, that we uh, understand and comprehend uh, the, the whole scale, the whole scale of uh, of uh, human losses that uh, uh, that we suffered. But uh, but uh, uh, there is what we see now. Uh, for instance, in the region of Kharkiv, uh, they were um, uh, liberated uh, in, in in September. Uh, so, um, what we see uh, in terms of um, uh, forceful detentions, of, of, of uh, cases of, of uh, uh, rapes uh, against women, of uh, uh, intimidation, uh, of, uh, of killings of, of civilians without a, any need. Uh, uh, so, it is really uh, traumatizing uh, because there are thousands of, of cases uh, in, in, in those small cities and villages that have been uh, freed. Uh, uh, recently, so uh, I cannot even imagine um, what we will uh, find out when when the whole Ukraine is finally liberated, uh, and uh, that is something which also the whole world community should have in mind, uh, understanding that this war is a, a cynical war waged against ordinary people like us, against women, children, uh, elderly people. Uh, who have been suffering most, who could not be evacuated even from cities like Bakhmut. It's now the hottest place on earth, uh, the mm -hmm. city of Bakhmut in the region of Donetsk, uh, where uh, Russians have concentrated uh, all the resources, uh, tens of thousands of, of uh, soldiers uh, of the army, of that private group of Wagner. Everything they have, they, they concentrate on one spot, and uh, there are still many civilians uh, in the city of Bakhmut who just cannot be evacuated because uh, they are 80 years old or older, they, they are not able to evacuate. 
So therefore, uh, it's it's uh, it's a it's a tragedy. It's a biggest tragedy in Europe uh, uh, that we have seen uh, since 80 years. Ambassador, uh, at this moment, notwithstanding the the war that is taking place uh, in Ukraine, uh, you all still manage to assist the in the. Um, in the Turkey-Syrian earthquake that just occurred two weeks ago. Talk to us about your uh, relationship with the, with the surround with other surrounding countries uh, around the Ukrainian border and how you they are managing to assist Ukraine at this time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for, for this question. Of course, uh, we, we all were shocked uh, by, by this uh, terrible tragedy um, uh, of the earthquake that took uh, uh, place recently and uh, took tens of thousands of lives in Turkey and in Syria and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm, I'm glad that uh, our country uh, Ukraine uh, belonged to, to, to those uh, uh, states that uh, had offered uh, its assistance immediately without thinking without uh, taking into account uh, the uh, um, this terrible situation on the ground uh, because of the war uh, and uh, the, our government has decided to send uh, uh, 87 emergency rescue personnel uh, and uh, also paramedics with all the necessary equipment. Uh, uh, we sent uh, two uh, planes, uh, Antonov 32 and Antonov 26, because Ukraine, as you know, has been producing uh, 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 aircraft uh, since many many decades and uh, uh, and I have asked my uh, colleague my ambassador our ambassador in in, in Ankara uh, what um, uh, what were, what we could achieve there was there was a, was a small contribution that Ukraine uh, could um, uh, could make uh, uh, to uh, to uh, soften the uh, and, and the suffering uh, of uh, of our uh, brothers and sisters in, in Turkey uh, and um, uh, they have uh, inspected uh, over 400 uh, earthquake hit buildings and uh, dismantled rubbles of uh, over 100 uh, uh, sites of, of, the, of this uh, uh, earthquake and they recovered 55 bodies of, of victim, victims unfortunately so um, that's our contribution uh, and uh, uh, and i think that's natural that uh, i mean uh, you, you you cannot uh, just uh, remain neutral when when you see uh, this kind of uh, natural disaster and uh, and we know and that's also something which uh, combines uh, us our two countries ukraine and, and belize because we uh, we we know and uh, how, uh, uh, how how vulnerable uh, your your state your country uh, and uh, many other countries in, in the caribbean uh, are because of uh, of tornadoes and other natural disasters uh, that therefore uh, we would be glad uh, to find, to help uh, yourself, your country, your people, and, and uh, all of the region to find uh, adequate uh, responses uh, to, um, to this uh, uh, changing of, of, of climate, uh, which endangers life uh, in, in, in Belize, in, in other countries of the world. So we see um, uh, war is there, uh, and we are grateful for, for the support of our friends and allies. But, uh, uh, but climate uh, change is also a uh, huge challenge uh, that is before us and therefore uh, we would be happy, we would be happy to uh, initiate, irrespective of this war, some uh, projects and some, uh, some decisions uh, within the UN, within other international bodies uh, to help alleviate, alleviate the risks for countries like Belize uh, to, uh, uh, to be hit by, by tornadoes because that's something which also concerns us irrespective of this huge geographical distance. And finally, Ambassador, for me, the, the world has basically come to, to assist and aid Ukraine in this, in this tragic event. Um, but what are some resources that are needed at this moment, and how can any person uh, assist you all? Well, uh, as I mentioned, we are uh, uh, deeply uh, grateful, grateful to all the allies, all the peace-loving uh, states and, and people all over the globe uh, for, for this uh, tremendous support. And uh, of course, uh, one thing is when governments help, uh, and, uh, uh, and we, are, uh, we, we, we do appreciate uh, uh, this assistance. Uh, uh, and uh, of course, uh, what we need, uh, I, I already mentioned, is uh, more weapons, uh, and we are speaking about uh, uh, air defense systems, about artillery, about ammunition, about tanks, uh, long-range missiles, fighter jets, uh, also the Navy, 
uh, that is something which uh, which we need because otherwise uh, we cannot uh, defend uh, our country and we cannot liberate uh, uh, the occupied territories but uh, at the same time uh, i think that um, uh, we we would be grateful if um, uh, if everyone uh, each, each and single person all over the globe uh, could make a contribution there is a uh, there is a uh, like a national uh, account uh, uh, which uh, our government has installed where uh, every single person, be it in Europe, in America, in the Caribbean, could make uh, uh, some small contribution, be it just a couple of, of dollars uh, or more, uh, to help foremost uh, those who have been suffering, uh, those IDPs, about 5 million Ukrainians, as I mentioned, who had uh, to leave their homes in the eastern part of Ukraine, and now they, 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 they live in, in uh, in uh, in school buildings or in 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 some sport facilities uh, and to those people they they need to help uh, now we have winter today it's like zero degree uh, in kiev and we had uh, days uh, with minus 10 um, uh, or so uh, in the last weeks so that is something where each single person uh, of goodwill uh, be it in belize in other countries uh, all over the globe could could join this campaign and help uh, ukrainians um, uh, to uh, to go through uh, these uh, dark times of our history. Ambassador Melnik, thank you so much for coming in this morning. I think that I can speak for all of us here in Belize when we say we do stand with Ukraine and we hope that this tragedy ends soon. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, April. Dear Isain, for for this invitation. Uh, I hope I will be able also to visit your beautiful country. Maybe even the next uh, week. Let's see if if uh, if we would manage uh, that uh, because we would like to strengthen the ties uh, with the Belizean uh, people, with your government, uh, and uh, uh, and we would like also to uh, to show uh, to uh, to your. Uh, people that uh, Ukraine uh, is uh, might be far away geographically, but uh, in terms of, of our uh, unity, in terms of uh, of belonging to this uh, uh, one big uh, civilization of uh, people that help each other, that is something that I would like uh, to 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 help your country, your government to understand us better. Thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, all the best to you, and God God bless uh, Belize and and your people. Thank you, thank you. We hope we do see him here for true. I think if he come, he's not going back. <laughs> and as we move on with our show for this morning, we're going to take a short break, and we will be back with Belizean Condé Nast Traveler Top Travel Specialist, Patricia Johnson. She'll be in studio with us to discuss the Condé Nast and how Belize is at the top. We'll be right back. Stay tuned.